here we go with part two. Sorry that cut off. Um, I was right in the middle of filming and um, anywho, so the decision that came through um, at the beginning of March that I was sharing about uh, was actually a decision from the EU that is closing all of their doors to the refugees. Um, they have decided to really support financially, um, but that it's almost impossible to continue receiving people. Um, so they are sending all of the people who are coming across the borders into Europe, they're sending them to Turkey. Um, and they're going to be supporting financially Turkey and this decision has had massive impact. Um, it was made back on the 7th or 8th of March and then if you saw um, just a lot of transition and things that are happening and, and a lot of fear and a lot of insecurity and that is only, yeah, a lot of questions, a lot of uh, hatred and racism and just uh, pain coming out of the response toward the, the situation with these people. Um, and, and if you saw in the news last week on Tuesday or Wednesday, I think it was, the, the attack that was in Brussels and the situations that are just coming to bring even more fear, that the enemy is just using so much of, of these people to just completely, um, yeah, completely shatter. Uh, and, and yet, God is bringing light into the middle of that. I was uh, with talking with some of our contacts in Brussels that, that are safe, um, uh, that weren't affected, but the, the, the metro station that was hit was actually within walking distance to them because they are very close to the European Parliament. And um, they've had opportunities in these last days to really have a presence and to speak life and to speak joy and to speak the fact that God is, is here, that God is real, that God is in control, and that God is love and, and He is the one who can give us answers in these situations. So continue to pray for Europe, pray for the situations that are happening that um, I really, and we as a church, like, and, and as ministers and, and leaders in the gospel, the, the church is recognizing that God is shaking so many things, that the work of the enemy is bringing about such tragedy. But just like Joseph said, you know, what the enemy intended for evil, God is using for good. And we just see God using this shaking and this movement because all of these nations that have been closed to the gospel, that have been overrun with Islam, that have been, you know, Syria and Lebanon and, um, sorry, not Lebanon, but Syria and Etheria and Ethiopia and uh, Libya and Morocco and the list goes on and on, uh, Afghanistan, Iraq. All of these nations that have been completely closed to the gospel are now flooding nations that have no restrictions. You know, uh, Germany took in so many. People are flooding the United Kingdom, um, France, Italy, Greece, these places that have uh, an inheritance of the gospel and have an open door to preach the gospel. These refugees are flooding in and God is using it for his glory. So pray for us, pray for wisdom, pray for strength, pray for more workers to come with a passion to, to evangelize, pray for people who have a heart for, for Muslims and for uh, an amazing ability to speak the Arabic language. We need, um, we need Bibles, we need resources, we need uh, your prayers and just continue to, to lift us up and remember the work that's happening in Europe because it's a a strange and exciting season uh, but it is one that is a battle it is warfare and the enemy is not happy and the enemy is out to destroy but God is faithful and God is amazing so um, yeah I just wanted to share a little bit of that with you guys and um, one of the kind of final things just to really impart the thought that's been happening in my mind these last couple of weeks and, and months um, and I think it's really fitting for Easter weekend to just declare this afresh that you know and Colossians, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> when my brain is going blank now, but it tells us that Christ in us is the hope of glory. And you know, that was a verse that I knew for so many years. Uh, I learned it in Bible drill. I heard it in sermons. I maybe even preached it and talked about it in Bible uh, studies, you know, but to really use that phrase to understand the reality that Christ in us is the hope of glory, that Christ in us is the only answer to this world that is broken and confused and lost and hopeless that I carry the answer within me, that by His Spirit, by His power, the same power that raised Christ from the dead that we are celebrating this week, and that presence moves in me and acts in me and brings hope to those who don't have any hope. So whether you're in a church in America and you're praying uh, for your coworkers who are going through a divorce or through a friend who just found out they're pregnant and they're a teenager and they don't know what to do, or through churches in Europe or ministering wherever it is, that you are ministering, I pray that we would be awakened to that reality as the church and the body of Christ, that Christ in us is the hope of glory. Um, 
What an amazing, amazing power and strength and truth that that is. That Christ in us is the hope of glory. And I just pray that God will awaken that afresh in you as he continues to awaken it in me. That what that means, that hope that I carry, that presence that I carry, that joy that I carry is him and him alone. That there's no pressure, but there's a, a freedom to express that and a freedom to share that with no regard to who's going to come against that, with no regard to who it's going to offend. Because people are looking for hope. People are looking for life. People are looking for something. And whether they're in... The most comfortable job and the most comfortable materialistic setting they are broken and they need Jesus or whether they are a refugee with a backpack on their shoulders and no shoes on their feet they need hope so yeah that was burning in my heart this morning uh, and I just wanted to share that I love you guys I thank you I'm sorry that it broke up right in the middle but I just pray that you would be blessed uh, and that you keep praying for me, and there's definitely more things to come in the weeks ahead. Love you loads. Bye.